Hey everybody, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Svenja and here on YouTube we talk all about knitting and I'm super excited to be back for part two of my Summer of Socks series where I will be sharing some of the sock patterns that I will be knitting this summer. If you didn't catch part one of my series, I'll be sure to link it somewhere up here. But in that video, I talk a lot more about why I'm choosing to knit exclusively socks this summer. And it also talks through my list of sock makes. And by that, I mean a list that I've come up with of different sock styles, characteristics, or aspects of sock making that I really hope to accomplish by the end of the season. Now I know we're already a few weeks into the summer season and I actually already have a couple pairs of socks done, but I thought it'd be really fun to talk through my list and really share what I'm hoping to get out of a season long of exclusively knitting socks and maybe provide you some inspiration as well. If you wanna find any of these patterns at a later date, I'll be sure to put a link to the Ravelry bundle that I made in the description of this video. I'll also be putting photos through this episode for you to have a visual to reference as I talk through all these patterns. So I have my laptop down here to be able to look up all the details of the pattern, so excuse me while I look down, but I will again be sure to put some photos in for you to see a little bit more about what I'm talking about. The first category on my list is a basic vanilla sock. I just didn't feel right committing to knitting socks for an entire season without at least including one basic pair. Now, I traditionally knit a lot of vanilla socks. I do cuff down with a traditional heel flop and gusset, and the pattern I'm about to talk about is my go-to vanilla sock pattern. I've mentioned it a lot on my channel here. Um, so my favorite basic vanilla sock pattern is the I'm So Basic Socks by Summer designs. This is the pattern where I learned to knit socks from and it's also the pattern that I recommend to new sock knitters because there are some great picture tutorials as well as videos that kind of coincide with the written instructions that just make it a really great beginner sock pattern. The next category on my list is knitting a pair of toe-up socks. Now again, like I just said, I'm traditionally cuffed down, so something about knitting toe-up socks is a little bit intimidating. It could be something to do with the fact that the cast-on has to be seamless or invisible as you increase the toe. However, I did have a great recommendation for a pattern come through by a subscriber, so thank you so much if you reached out. Uh, the pattern that I will likely do is called the Toe Up Socks with a Difference by Wendy D. Johnson, and it is a free Ravelry download and calls for either a Turkish cast-on or Judy's Magic cast-on. So I feel like once I nail the cast-on, the rest should be pretty easy. I do have a sock ruler, which will help me measure for the heel, which I'm really excited to use. So yeah, we'll see. Maybe this is my new preference after I learn how to make two-up socks. The next category on my list is knitting a pair of socks that have a interesting or a new cuff. Now, I actually already finished a pair of socks that meet this category, and that is the Frills Sock Pattern by Summerly Designs. This is a pattern from her Shorty Sock Set, uh, which is a compilation of, I believe, three sock patterns together um, that are all Shorty Socks. And I believe the different versions include um, a basic shorty sock, one that has a little bit of a different arch support, and then the frills pattern. And I will talk a little bit more about shorties a little later, but this is really my go-to pattern um, when it comes to knitting shorty socks, although you can pretty much alter any uh, vanilla sock pattern to be able to be kind of an ankle or um, shorty sock. The next category on my list is knitting a different type of heel than I traditionally do. So again, I love a good heel flap and gusset, but I thought this would be a great opportunity to try out some different heels. And at first, I just wanted to do a afterthought heel. I've knit them in the past, but they've never been great fitting, so I thought this would be a good opportunity to kind of work through that. But then after some recommendations from subscribers commenting on my last video, I did add the Fish Lips Kiss heel 
to this category. So I have several patterns to talk about. The first one that is an afterthought heel pattern is called Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson. And this is a paid for pattern, but it sounds like it is quite in depth. It uh, has a tutorial um, for an afterthought heel, and it also includes a modified twist for placing heel waist yarn, which will make it easier to remove at a later time and kind of leads to like a more seamless look. There's also four sizes in this pattern, which is quite impressive because I feel like sock patterns um, typically only include like two, maybe three sizes. Um, so this ranges from a child to a men's large or woman's large. And there's also a bonus that includes a simple technique to get a rounder toe, which is right up my alley. I do love a good rounded toe. Um, so again, Smooth Operator Socks by Susan B. Anderson. This will probably be the pattern that I use. A resource that I should mention for an afterthought heel that I found is um, available on Ravelry. It's a free tutorial by Judy Kennedy. And again, this isn't a pattern, so it will show just how to do the afterthought heel, but I thought this was pretty thorough and a great resource if you're just looking for some basic instructions for an afterthought heel. Moving on to the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which I find such a funny name for a heel. I've never done this before, and I'm sure it has a great uh, story behind the name. And the resource that I found, I'm not going to call it a pattern because it is technically a tutorial. It is paid for on Ravelry, but it sounds like a really great reference for knitting a Fish Lips Kiss Heel, which is basically a heel that has no wraps, no gaps, no maths or picking up stitches. Um, and I've also heard that this is one of the best fitting sock heels. Um, so I think definitely worthwhile checking out. The next category on my list is knitting a two at a time pair of socks. Now I've done this a few times. I don't love it to be honest with you. I feel like I just prefer knitting one sock at a time. I definitely do get second sock syndrome, however my strategy is usually as soon as I finish one sock I just cast the next on immediately and that way I just don't have it like laying around and I get distracted by a fun new project. So I thought for the sake of sock knitting this summer I should include a two at a time um, sock make on my list. So I have two patterns in this category. The first is Mina's Two at a Time Socks, which is a free pattern available on Ravelry. It is written, but it also has a YouTube video that helps to show how to manage yarn while you're knitting two at a time and helps to kind of prevent the cakes from getting tangled up, which can be um, quite an issue. It is Magic Loop. And um, again, it's a free pattern, so I definitely think that one would be worth checking out. And then the second pattern is actually not necessarily a pattern, it's more of a tutorial on how to just knit cuff down two at a time socks. And it is by Crazy Sock Lady, who I've talked a lot about. I'm partaking in her summer sock camp this season. So any chance to support her, she is super talented when it comes to making tutorials and videos for sock knitting. Um, so again, this is a cuff down um, tutorial, features a heel flap and gusset. And she also in this video shows how to split a self striping yarn um, skein into two and how to match up the colors so the stripes correlate. Um, and she talks a lot about yarn management uh, when making two at a time socks. So probably the tutorial that I use and I'll just use my basic vanilla sock pattern um, to knit uh, that pair. The next category on my list is making a pair of shorty socks. Now I love shorties. I knit them all the time. I just think they're super fun. They fly off the needles. They're a great opportunity to mix and match different yarn and just have a lot of fun with. And I typically use just a basic vanilla sock pattern and I shorten the leg of the sock. However, I definitely need to give a shout out to one of my favorite sock designers, Summerly from Summerly Designs. I have multiple of her like summer or her sock uh, 
volumes that feature a collection of different patterns and I have both volumes of her shorty socks. And this summer specifically, I'm really hoping to make her Palm Squad sneaker sock, which is a shorty sock that has some arch support and a really fun pom-pom kind of on the heel. Her shorty sock set also has a recipe for making scrappy socks, which I found was very helpful, and also a little tutorial on how to avoid jogs in stripes when knitting stripes socks. Speaking of stripes, the next category on my list is color work. And when I was first thinking about this category, I was considering like Fair Isle or some color stranded work. However, I've kind of moved away from that and I'm thinking stripes will just satisfy this category. And I'm a big fan of just using scraps for like a stripey pair of vanilla socks, which I actually have a pair in progress right now, but I do have two patterns that are, I feel like, notable to mention here. So, so the first pattern is the Color Palette Socks by Laura Moratz. This is a free Ravelry download. It's only available in one size, however, I think it's the European size 38-39. I love this pattern. I think it's so sweet. I really love kind of how the neutral yarn breaks up the different stripes. This would be a great way to do like a fade or just use the same color and have like a great just stripey textured sock. The other pattern I really love and wanted to mention is the Summer Picnic Socks by This Handmade Life. And This Handmade Life is a really talented sock designer. She's actually brand new to me. Um, I specifically love this one because of the really sweet gingham pattern. I think it is adorable. It just screams summer. I think making it in like a light blue in a white would be really cute. Um, or like a red and white to uh, really kind of draw out like the picnic vibes of summer. The next category on my list is using a self-striping yarn. Of course, you can use any type of pattern for a self-striping yarn. However, I think just a basic vanilla pair to really highlight the different color changes would be fun. Um, I do have one pattern to mention that uh, is a toe-up sock and um, really considers how to make a self-striping yarn um, line up properly as it relates to the heel and then it also talks a lot about how to maximize yardage and that is the trusty toe up sock pattern by Tannis Fiber Arts. It's a free pattern which is excellent and I will definitely be using this as a resource because I feel like I'm going to be pretty particular about having the stripes match up. I don't know, I've never worked with self-striping yarn, so I'm really excited to give it a try. I didn't have any in my stash, so as a treat to myself this summer, I have two skeins that are currently in the mail, and I'm just really anxious to cast this on and to finally use some self-striping yarn. Next category is all about texture. And when I started looking for textured sock patterns, I could not stop favoriting patterns on Ravelry. I just feel like there are so many amazing textured sock patterns, and it was really hard to narrow down just a few for this episode. So as part of my Ravelry bundle, I'll be sure to add any patterns that I'm really liking that won't necessarily be mentioned right now. First pattern on this list, and I'm definitely planning to make these, are the Wildflowers and Honeycomb Socks by This Handmade Life. This is just the sweetest sock pattern. It's got this really cute eyelet design and a sweet little honeycomb heel, which I've never seen done before. I was just smitten with this pattern and I really can't wait to cast it on. An alternative, if you didn't want to knit eyelets on the entire sock, is another This Handmade Life pattern and that is the Bluebird Cafe sock pattern. Um, yeah, again, it just has the eyelets on the front of the sock and um, just FYI, it is a pattern uh, designed from the toe up. Another textured sock pattern by This Handmade Life is the August Honey Socks, which are a pair of shorty socks and features a really beautiful honeycomb cable. This pattern is written as well as charted and has instructions to do both a cuff down and a toe up version. I have two textured sock patterns by The Crazy Sock Lady. Again, she's one of my favorite sock designers as well as sock knitting instructors. 
and I feel like I could mention every single one of her patterns because they're all delightful but specifically two are standing out to me. So the first is Rhinebeck Roomies, which thank you to another subscriber for this recommendation. This is a cuff down pattern with a traditional heel flap and gusset, and it is very easy to memorize this really beautiful ribbed pattern, and I just really love how that looks. Her other pattern is the morning coffee socks, and I feel like I couldn't not include a ribbed sock pattern in this list. And I feel like I like this one in particular because of the three by one design. A lot of ribbed sock patterns are two by two out there, so I thought this one was a little bit different, and um, I just really loved the overall style. I do wanna give a honorable mention to a new sock designer that I recently discovered called Knit on Designs. She has a lot of great textured sock patterns as well as shorties and I will definitely be checking more of her patterns out in the future. The next and almost last category, I promise you we're getting close to the end, is a pair of DK weight socks. What I failed to mention is that the rest of these patterns that I'm mentioning today are all for fingering weight yarn, but for the purpose of knitting lots of different types of socks this summer, I thought it'd be fun to knit some socks with different yarn weights. And I've actually already made a pair of DK weight socks, but figure I would mention the pattern. It is no surprise, it's another crazy sock lady pattern called the DK weight vanilla socks. It's a free Ravelry download, and it is knit uh, cuff down with a heel flap and gusset, and I find it is one of the best DK fitting um, sock patterns out there. The last but not least category on my list is using a non-traditional yarn for a pair of socks. And by this, I meant something other than a traditional sock yarn that is typically like a merino wool plus a nylon or a silk blend. I have a lot of Let Lopi yarn, which is a Icelandic yarn, and thought it would be really nice to be able to use some of those leftovers. So the pattern I have for this category is called Camp Socks by Ozetta, um, who's also one of my favorite knitwear designers. It is a sock pattern that is designed cuff down specifically for the yarn Let Lopi, and there are two sizes that this is designed for. So I thought this would be a great pattern to make, um, but also uh, very much summer themed given it's called Camp Socks. Definitely won't be a pattern or a finished pair of socks that I will wear this season, um, but perhaps something that I can knit now as a gift for the holiday season or just tuck away for the winter months ahead. Alrighty, that's it for my list of socks that I hope to make this summer. Of course, I'll always be adding or subtracting a few ideas and would love your recommendations as well if you have any sock patterns that you think I might enjoy. Again, you can find all of these via the link to the Ravelry bundle in the description of this video. And like always, happy knitting. I'll see you next time. Bye.